All right, so the party I'm going to be talking about today is the Constitution Party. Their current chair of the party is Frank Fleckinger, but as far as I could find, there was no House leader and no Senate leader, along with no Chair of Governors Association. And the founders of this party are Daryl Castle and Howard Phillips. And before they were known as the Constitution Party, their name was actually the U.S. Taxpayers Party. Their motto is Integrity, Liberty, and Prosperity. The mission statement of the Constitution Party is to secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity through upholding the principles of the Declaration, Constitution, and the Bill of Rights. Um, as of 2016, the Constitution Party was only affiliated in 14 states, and their colors of the party are red, white, and blue. So the history of the party, it was founded in 1992, as many independent state parties got together to form the U.S. Taxpayer Party, and they held their first convention in New Orleans. And at that convention, Howard Phillips was nominated to be the first person to run as their presidential candidate, and was put as the first presidential candidate for 21 states. In the 20th century, so since it was created in 1992, it hasn't had much history in the 20th century, but in 1995, the FEC, the Federal Election Commission, did recognize the party as a national party, and in 1999, they officially changed the name to the Constitution Party in order to emphasize their goal of bringing government back to how the Constitution created it. And for their electoral history, as I said before, Howard Phillips was their first presidential candidate in 1992, and he got 43,000 votes in that election, which was only 0.04% of the overall votes across the country. The most recent candidate for the party was the other founder, Daryl Castle, in 2016, and he received 172,000 votes and was only 0.15% of the total votes. The best year for the elections came in 1996 when Howard Phillips ran again for president, and this time he received 0.19% of votes, getting 185,000. And in the short history of the party, no one has <laughs> even come close to becoming president, and most of the time when they would run for something, they have not gotten that position. The first person to win an office, well, there was two of them, Jeffrey Heislop and Jack Elsinger, who won as Mayor of Eagle River, Wisconsin, and Hull, Wisconsin, Board of Supervisors member in 2001. And the political party, the Constitution Party, has sought almost all kinds of political offices in the government, from city councilmen to presidents, but most of the time they did not get elected. And recent victories, my favorite is that in 2016, Bruce Johnson won for Minnesota Soil and Water Supervisor in District 4. And then in 2012, Randy Fontenot won Chief of Police in Eunice, Louisiana. So for the party's economic political positions, they believe that the key to a healthy economy is small businesses, not large corporations. And true capitalism rejects restrictive government taxation and over-regulation of businesses. They want to get rid of restrictive government regulation, fees and taxes, along with responsible trade agreements with foreign governments, and doing that will ensure major business and job growth. Having manufacturing in our own country will greatly help improve the economic growth, they believe. For their social positions, they want to completely get rid of Social Security while maintaining the obligations that are in place under Social Security. They also want to revoke the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act. They resist the attempt by government to completely get rid of or reduce earned benefits to veterans and their survivors. They do state that the Constitution grants no authority to the federal government to either grant or deny the religious expressions of people in any place. And with their policy being to stick to what the Constitution set in place, the right to keep and bear arms is guaranteed by the Second Amendment to the Constitution. Their environmental stance, they believe that it is our duty to protect the environment, which God has created for us, and we are meant to maintain and develop it. They also support all efforts to protect the environment and to reduce pollution, 
and they want to get rid of the Endangered Species Act, which provides security for endangered species, so it doesn't necessarily make sense that they want to repeal an act that supports keeping the environment. And for natural defense, one of the main statements in the preamble to the Constitution is providing for the common defense. So the Constitution Party wants, says it's necessary for the government to provide for Americans' defense. They deny the power of the president to send troops into combat when there is not a war that has been declared by the Congress. And the party doesn't want to continue with the interventionist policy, which sends troops into repeated wars. For their international policies, they believe that with so many illegal immigrants coming into America and being eligible for federal aid, the government's treasury is being drained. They want to do anything that can stop illegal immigration since it's in unconstitutional, and they want the U.S. troops to interfere with immigration so that illegal aliens are not allowed into this country. For a student wing, I wasn't able to find a na nationwide age demographic, but I was able to find it from the state of Ohio election, and from that data, it seems that the Constitution Party mainly draws young voters, and College students are a major part of the group of voters for the Constitution Party, but they're not the party's biggest supporters. For the party's biggest supporters, that would be the youth wing. As of 2014, the largest group in Idaho what, for the Constitution Party are ages 26 to 29, and it could easily be attributed to the fact that young Americans are drawn to the idea of returning to how America was formed back in the 1700s. And what I like about this party is that their strong stance of keeping the government and not ruining it. I wouldn't necessarily say I'm incredibly into maintaining the environment, but I do believe it would be nice for us to preserve what God has given us, which they stated on their website. And But one thing I don't like about the, con the Constitution Party is that there are many flaws with their idea of trying to go back to how America was when the Constitution was created. Because since then, so many things have changed, society has changed so much that if they wanted to go back to the Constitution, it kind of would be a step back because everything's incredibly different now and the constitutional government would not fit in today's society. And the party could do a lot of things better to actually start winning some offices, but one of the biggest things is their age demographic. There weren't, after the age of 40 or so, there weren't any like basically any voters from over 40 years old and so and to improve their chance of winning i definitely would suggest that they start appealing to the older generations when i look at their slogans campaigns and ads their motto speaks to me mostly integrity liberty and prosperity and it's appe appealing to the public eye and when people see the motto they automatically think yeah that's what i want for this country and it will draw them into the party their motto works very well in drawing people towards their joining their party. And when I chose to do this political party, I believe that it would be incredibly boring since I've never heard of the party before. But researching more, it surprised me since many of the policies did seem agreeable. Though as I kept reading, it was like, mm, I don't quite agree with what they're saying. I learned a lot from doing research on this party, the Constitution Party, and I'm glad I chose it for my party.